Hi there, it's Peter Bourne and here we're getting into the wines on Royal Chardonnay Day at the coast in Sydney. I'm with Andrew Spinazzi from Tyrrells and David Bicknell from Oak Ridge and we're just having a look at the, uh, the Tyrrells wine now, the VAT 47 and of course the famous VAT number way back to 1971. Yeah, Peter, uh, first finished 1971. Um, so I've been involved in those since uh, 1980. Um, We've changed that, evolved that style all the way through. The, the 09 we're tasting here at the moment, I, I think it's a, a very good vintage. Um, it's got to the stage now where, you know, the Hunter Valley's a fairly warm climate, and as Dave was saying before, it's a, it can be a bit of a challenge, but uh, the way we've attacked it is uh, about a third of that wine, actually, now we've basket the old basket press. I find that I, I can retain better acid and, and fruit balance and get the juice very, very clean. And without using any fining agents and then go to barrel permit. So it's trying to raise the bar for it to you know, protect the, the natural acid. That's what we sort of want to do. And, um, it's a wine that doesn't, uh, it sees all French oak, no male lacquer. Um, so you get that buttery taste. We tend to get pretty good acid. We don't get high acid in the Hunter Valley, but we get moderate. Um, so I don't see much point in putting through a male lacquer to reduce the acid. Um, I, 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 and I like to keep the wine fresh. So, Keep it fresh, there's no malo. It's in French oak for about five and six months, and in the vintage, and this has been in for about five months. Um, so I bottled it in about August, September of 2009. And, um, it's got some lovely spices and uh, life to it, and that sort of great fruity note to it that I really, really enjoy. I'm just looking at all these bottles, and we don't want to extend it, but the here with that, they're all under screw cap. And I do believe that's another thing that's really good. Yeah, dramatic. Just uh, to continue on to summarise and Andrew's comments about the, the Fat 47 is the restraint. And you know, 25 years ago there was a lack of restraint and there's a, a tremendous amount of restraint in that wine, so not too much on nicely judged acidity and, and nice palate weight and structure. And I think that's very good. Screw caps, you might think, has made a big difference and I think that uh, even you know, 10 years ago we were making Chardonnays that at three or four years of age they were all falling out and they were all tasting the same. And, and now we're able to preserve uh, the integrity of the fruit that's there and really give some shelf life and, and maturation possibilities in some of these, uh, these, some of these wines. We, we always made the Bat 47 to, to drink now but also to age as well. We found with porks that that could have been some of the problem. You know, when a wine gets to eight years of age, it's just not at its best. So yeah, right, now the screw cap for this, I say. So now we're on to the 2009 Oak Ridge 864 Chardonnay. This is David Chardonnay. 864 is the address. Yes, that's it. There's no uh, no uh, no highly paid marketing plans there. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just our address on on the highway and. Um, uh, this is a single vineyard wine from uh, a core part of the Yarra Valley uh, in red volcanic soil. And the only additive this wine's had is sulfur dioxide. Um, and we've really backed off on a lot of winemaking uh, now because we're confident, you know, with a 35 year old vineyard with high natural acidity. So all we have to do is press it and ferment it, and we'll get a real demonstration, a real stamp of what the terroir of that, that site's like. And, um, Keep it this is like, yeah, keep it as simple as possible. And this 09 is, is almost a facsimile of the same wine, same vineyard from 2008. And it's really quite pleasing to see those sorts of results. It actually gives us the confidence that what we're doing and working with these vineyards is the right thing. I'm always really interested in texture with Chardonnay, and this is a lovely contrast, both of them working really well for me. I used it to turn grapefruit with the VAT 47 and I, I love that and it's really tiny and really spicy to me. This is a richer round of wine, um, but no male lacquer? No male whatsoever. No. no. In fact, uh, for some, some producers this would make uh, sort of high octane sparkling wine. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's quite a high, an elevated acidity and that's what we get naturally from the vineyard. Like Andrew, the approach is uh, to not put it through male. Um, because we actually want to retain that, that freshness and, and, and that actually provides some length on the palate and I think that's one of the things that Yarra Valley can really do. They can produce a very uh, fine, uh, a little bit maybe bony when they're younger but very long, pure, light acidity. One, one of the things I find with with hunters is that they can be a little more citrus backbone to the wines and that's also in the semi-lines. You know, 
with your wine, I know you use a little bit of uh, you know, solids, which is the extra bit of the pulp in the grapes, it's suspended in the juice. And that gives it that lovely texture on the wine. It's a little bit hot. a lot. <laughs> okay, and it makes it very, not only fresh, but very delicate, but with a lot of texture. Yeah, and, uh, that doesn't make the, the cut up clumsy, it leaves it very long and fresh. Yeah, it's a beautiful wine. Yeah. I mean, that's the great conundrum of a wine like this, that it has got that textural richness, but it's not heavy in any way at all. And it's just interesting, the first wine we tasted from Tasmania, then New South Wales, the Hunter Valley, um, but of course Tumbarumba is another area, and Orange that are doing things well, in New South Wales. In Victoria, there's a whole range. Obviously, the, the home has been uh, the Yarra Valley, uh, but Mornington, um, certainly Massacre, uh, Geelong with the richest style, and Beechworth. We jump across now to South Australia, and in my mind, there's only one area that really performs at the top level in uh, South Australia, and that's the Adelaide Hills. But boy, oh boy, are we blessed to have the Adelaide Hills as part of the Australian and part of the scene. Um, George Smith having a wonderful job in Ashton Hills, and this Penfolds wine, um, it's the A series as they call it, the Adelaide Hills series, um, 09, so 2009 vintage. And I think if you've ever seen the evolution of uh, Chardonnay in the hands of a larger company, uh, pen files are really showing what they can do. They're early wines in the mid 90s, as Andrew and we were talking about earlier. Um, those wines were quite heavy then uh, and overblown. But this wine has just evolved uh, in style to, I think, uh, a very definitive style and one that's very is it amazing to see the, the regional difference? You know, it's, they're all very fresh uh, in their own right, but it's definitely got that regionality, which is, and they're all fantastic. Uh, this one, the, the, the uh, Yo 9A, is almost a little bit cashew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got another nutty, yours a bit more textural. Obviously, there's a, if you like, there's an intersection with our wine in terms of the use of solids and the, yeah. and the very sort of complex fruit match characters that come out of that wine. But it is, it's a very different fruit flavour and it's a different way to I think it's got a little bit of male lactic, it's got a little bit of that uh, milk bottle sort of uh, character. The round creaminess. Round creaminess? Yeah. Oh, milk bottle. Milk bottle. Milk bottle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shake your own tea, mate. <laughs> You're coming sharp and see how they and I'm, I'm picking up a little bit of, of extra oak uh, cannon in that there. I think that wine will probably settle down with a little bit more time. The other area, of course, that has um, really been fantastic with Chardonnay in this country is Western Australia, led by uh, Margaret River. Um, we've got the Bass Felix here and their top line, the Hatesbury. Um, and this style to me, I've always described as peaches and cream. River. Um, the Great Southern, of course, does some great uh, Chardonnays as well. Um, people like Howard Park down there, uh, what Larry Cherubino is doing. Um, but uh, I think Virginia Wilcox is doing a great job with it. Look, I think an important thing here to recognize is that these wines are from Mark and Howard, contemporary Chardonnays are uh, certainly a couple of sizes down where they used to be. And uh, I think there's been a real endeavour to, to, to reel that in. And obviously, you know, high alcohol wines don't mature particularly crazy mm. anyway. Yeah. And hopefully that's part of it. Uh, but it's certainly a lot more popular than the features of Grand Wild. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. It's, it's a fantastic I, I, I talked to Virginia about this wine. It's, uh, it's whole fruit press in, in the press and um, very, very high in solid. So the juice is quite opaque, lots of solids. Um, it's barrel select. Uh, again, uh, like the first three, no male lactic. Uh, Someone does, they get good acid, not high but not low, so keep it natural acid, keep it tight. Um, and it was about 80% new, new French oak. So well, it's, on the high, it's, on the, it's on the higher side of a new oak percentage, but it's not obvious in one. Which shows the strength of the fruit. Exactly. And I think that's a really good point to pick up when I was just talking with that tasting group last night. And, and I think the wine making artifice that we can use with Chardonnay, that you guys can use with Chardonnay, you know, is all about understanding the concentration of fruit. And I was using an example, and it's like, like the, the foundations of a house. If you've got solid foundations, you can start to build other things on top. And I think when you've got that solid foundation of quality of fruit and from the vineyards uh, and good sites, I think then you can add that wine making uh, that can build on the flavours and not overwhelm. Uh, that's a lovely one. Yeah. Look, there's, there's, 